Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. Today I'd like to show you how to cut some houndstooth dovetails by eye. Now, these are more of a decorative dovetail. They're very nice. They're a little bit more work, but they really stand out. In this case here, these are going to be the two top drawers of my vanity. So they're the ones that are going to get the most traffic, and you're going to be able to see those. The rest of these have been done just as some plain dovetails, although there have been some different techniques, as you've seen in the other videos. Now, the first two videos of this dovetail series tried to stress the importance of the idea that pins first or tails first, it's kind of moot. Pick the one that you like the best, that you're the most comfortable with, that you have the most success. When you're just doing basic dovetails, you can use pins first or tails first, and you can use western saw, Japanese saw, whatever you want. Use a butter knife if you're capable of it. Now, these next two videos in this dovetail series, I'd like to stress how certain dovetails actually prefer one technique over the other. Now, these houndstooth dovetails are actually very easy to do by eye, if you use a pins first technique that's based off the pins first technique I showed you in the very first video. Now there's going to be a complementary video to this video that shows you a different type of dovetail, the one that's hiding down here, that is much easier to cut tails first than it is to do pins first. So let's get cutting some houndstooth dovetails. The back is going to be done as normal dovetails. This is the piece that's in the back that's made a little bit higher as it's not going to touch. Now this particular drawer on the top the backs on these drawers, I've made them actually a little bit lower. The reason for that is there's a, a small clearance issue underneath the vanity that I don't want to have to deal with. So by making these a little bit shorter, I don't have to worry about this one little bump that's uh, underneath the granite for the way that they, they mounted some reinforcement. Now this is the drawer front. So as a drawer front, this is going to take the pins and these are going to get the tails as the side. So now let me get the sides here out of the way, then we can start doing some of the layout. Now, this is going to take a few marking gauges, so I do have this one here is set to the thickness of the mahogany, and this one's set to the thickness of the maple. Now, I care about the thickness of the maple in the case of this drawer front here for doing the joinery, so let me go ahead and scribe this. Now, these are pins, so these are actually going to get only the scribe on the face, not on the edges. So do all your scribing with your wheel marking gauge on all the boards, and then afterwards you can at least use your scribe to do the two scribes that we're going to need to do the houndstooth. Now you could actually get away with one, you're just going to want to make sure you mark all the relevant pieces with the one before you make an adjustment. So uh, it turns out to be really handy if you've got one of these dual marking gauges from Veritas. So now the layout for doing this, pins first, is very similar to what you're going to see in the pins first video. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a half pin here on the outside, I'm going to want to make it in such a way that the tail that's going to be in the maple is going to be covering this entire slot that's for the base. So we'll end up cutting room for a tail here and then of course up here as well. And then after that, the somewhat difference is at least when I'm eyeballing the houndstooth dovetails is I'll tend to work from both ways in so that I can keep it very symmetrical. Now with the other ones, you know, you eyeball the half or a third, but with these, you're adding several more little pins along the way. So you're going to want to keep those very even. So let's start by just putting a little half pin out here. I want to get that as close as I can to that groove. And then make an equal size one onto this side. Down to the line. Now, I'm going to come back over here because I want to make sure that I get that tail size just perfectly. So I want to make a tail socket here that's going to be perfect to hide this groove. So let me make that. And again, I'm just eyeballing the angle to something that I think is nice. The thinner your stock, the bigger angle you're going to want to have. The shallower it is, the more it's going to be able to pull out. So, And then soft woods, you tend to want it to be a little bit of a larger angle as well because of the compressibility. So. Uh, in hardwood to hardwood like this that's fairly thin. I'm probably going at a bigger angle than you would normally would. But I don't take a measuring device to it. Now I'm going to place another tail over here. Now if you remember the pins video, normally from here I would take the same saw configuration. I would slide it over to mark however many other cuts I needed to divide it out evenly, and then I would finish the tails. But in this case here, I'm going to be working from the outside in. So let's just go over here and I'll make a tail socket that's about the same size as that one.
Now I want to complete this pin and this pin. So we have a half pin, a tail, there's going to be a pin here. So let me finish this pin off to make it a full size pin. And we can make it uh, relatively narrow. And then equally over here, because we're going to work outside the Now we're going to tile out some narrow pins along the way here to create what are going to become houndstooth. So let me create a small. So we have a tail socket here and a pin. There's going to be another tail socket here. So let me make my mark off a tail. I'll make it uh, relatively small here. And then do the same on this side. And let me mark this so that it becomes a little bit more apparent what I'm doing. These half pins are being kept. This tail slot is going to become a tail socket. So that's a tail socket here as well. Here's a pin and a pin. Here's a tail socket and a tail socket. Those are going to be eliminated. So now we can make another pin over here. But let's start making some of the houndstooth pins. So these are going to be a little bit on the more narrow side but not so narrow I can't get my chisel in. That's always a concern. And then an equal size pin on this side. Now I'm gonna place a tail. Now this tail, because of the way that I'm gonna lay out the, the houndstooth, and you're gonna see this later, uh, when I get a little bit further on into the video, I don't really want this tail to be very big because it's actually not a tail. It's just going to be a space between some houndstooth dovetails. So let me make this a relatively small one again. And then on this side here. Let me go back to my markings. So this will be absent. This will be absent. Now I'll turn these, what's left here, I'm going to put a small pin here to be the other hound's tooth, and the other small pin here to be the hound's tooth, and then what's going to be left in the middle is going to be a small tail. So this will be eliminated as well. Okay, so up till now I haven't done anything special compared to the what the video was showing you on doing pins first, just doing the cuts. So at this point I want to actually do some of the marks. This pin here is going to become a houndstooth pin. I'm actually just going to mark it here on the bottom because that part will be cut away. This is also a houndstooth pin. It's going to be shortened. This is one and this is one. So those are going to be shortened, but the point that I want now is that this is a good time to do the marking that I'm going to need for these. And what that marking is, is it's the distance from this surface, so the outside surface, to where this pin is going to end prematurely. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this marking gauge, this dual marking gauge. Let me uh, set up here with two numbers, two sizes. Okay, I have two sizes on here. Okay, this is going to be me trying to draw this. This somewhat represents it. So this is one of the little pins that I put as a hound's tooth, and this is a pin that I put that's going to be a hound's tooth. This one and this one. I don't have as many as what I've got here just to show you what the idea here is. So what I've done with this marking gauge is I've set it up for two lines, and I'm going to scribe those lines on the top end grain. And what I want to do is I want to scribe a line. It's going to be somewhat exaggerated here on this paper. So I'm going to scribe a line there. So call it at about the one-third mark back from the front, and then another one down here. Okay, those are the two lines that I'm going to be scribing on here. What I'm going to do with these houndstooth is from this point here to this point here, I'm going to cut it straight. From this point to this point, 
I'm going to cut it straight. And then this becomes waste. It will become green, like you know, I'm showing green as being the parts that get cut away. These will become green, meaning they're going to be cut away, and that's going to become part of a tail. Right? So the only thing you're going to see in mahogany is this outside half pin, this little stub kind of pointy pin, this stub pointy pin, and then over here I'd be doing the same thing from this point to this point, here to here, and from here to here. Of course you can make those straight. I've made several of them straight, but tonight I want to just do them this way here because I think it'll be kind of fun. And then this outside here is a pin. So this will become waste and this will become waste. Now if this picture didn't make sense, it'll probably make sense more as you watch this go on. I just want to tell you what the scribe lines are that I'm drawing on here. I've got this set to two. One of them is about one third down from this surface. This one is about two thirds down from the surface. It's completely arbitrary. I have such a small thin stock I can't really go too crazy. So when I do the other cuts you'll get to see it. So let me go ahead and scribe these lines. I only need to really scribe them on these houndstooth dovetails. So on the pins, so here on this pin, this pin here. I mean, the other ones in between are, these are waste anyway, so I might as well just go scribe right across, sure is easier. And then this one here is further down. There we go. Now, even though I've cut those and there's this part here to remove, I'm going to remove these as if I was doing standard dovetails. I just want to mark that now because now is easier to mark it because this is still solid and good reference. Now, before I continue on this board, I have to transfer this to the tailboard. This is the tailboard that this is going to be attached to, so let's go ahead and transfer this. So just like before, just going to use a pencil. What's handy about it now is that we haven't cut the houndstooth yet, so we actually have full length, we have full length pins for me to mark this on. There we go. Now we're going to put the tailboard aside because we're not there yet. Now we're going to go back to this and I'm going to go ahead and clean this up as if I was doing a pins first side. So I've cleaned out the waste in between the pins, apparently not quite as well as I thought right there. A little bit of a hair, but there's going to be another pass of cleaning because I'm now going to be removing some of the material here that goes for the houndstooth. Now let me bring you in closer. Now you can somewhat see where the lines are. I've uh, kind of colored down here, this is below, so one of the scribe lines is right above this mark here. What I'm going to be doing for creating these houndstooth is that the other board is going to be here. <clears throat> these pins, these tops, are going to remain. These parts here are going to be removed. So in a way what we're doing is we're making kind of a funny shaped tail on this other board. So what I'm going to do is, from the two scribe lines, as, as I showed on this picture, going diagonally between the two scribe lines, I'm going to do that. I'm going to angle this direction on this pin. You know, so I'm going to angle this way on this pin, this way on this pin, and then this way, and this way. So we can make, give our uh, houndstooth dovetails a little bit of bite. So in a way, all I'm doing right now is marking. There's no way... Whoops. Helps if you tighten the device. Now, my scribe lines, I put them kind of deep. Uh, the horizontal ones, I wouldn't want to do them that deep normally. I'm going to be... I'll have a fair amount of wood coming off the edge that I can clean. Uh, but otherwise it wouldn't have been very visible for you. Okay, there we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fret saw and I'm going to sneak in under here. Let me color the part that's going to get removed. Right like that. And you can actually see sort of the, the toothy shape I'm leaving behind. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak in under here and I'm going to try cutting to be about like this. Now if I overshoot that a little bit on the underside of here, it's not really going to matter because it's going to be inside the joint. I don't really want to undercut it too much, but if I accidentally do a little bit, not a big deal. So you get yourself going diagonally and just take a look from the top. That's it right there. Now I'll do this one. Just like that. Now, 
The reason I did not want to cleave down with this, of course, is that who knows how it's going to go straight down. So now that I've got this part here cut down below, I can pretty much just pair off easily, chipping away as I go until I hit the line that I had. And there's our first houndstooth. You're not going to see that scribe line when we're done. Kind of wiggling it because I don't really want to press too hard to get it started on the grain. Now I can clean down here the little shoulder if there's a little bit of cleanup to do. Actually not bad at all. I cut that, uh, I got lucky and cut that fairly well. There you go. If I put it at an angle you'll be able to see this a little bit easier. Remember that this is the inside surface, so this is what you'd see on the side from the outside. You'll see maple coming in on this side. Now here's where we're going to have to be a little bit more careful to do the scribing. I had the pins transferred onto this board so that we'd know where to cut, but the problem is we can't cut full depth because we don't want to cut full depth on some of these. Some of these are only going to come down a little ways. So what I need to do is now I need to use like in my case, a double wheel scribe. If you have your other scribes, that's all fine as long as you've kept the same distance. These delineate the distances from the outside surface to the bottom of this, the pointy part of the tooth, and then the, the higher part of the tooth. Now, a lot of times hound's tooth dovetails are made with a flat, but let's have some fun with this. So what I'm gonna do is these four lines here need additional marking, so I'm gonna mark them Now let me take a green marker just to mark where there's going to be waste. I mean, we can clearly see that here's a pin socket. And we have a full pin socket here, and a half pin socket. There's a half pin socket hiding out here on the side. And then here we have the little teeth. Now that's only going to be the little tip, but I'm not going to mark that quite yet. So I guess I can just mark this very, very, very tip. Don't want to get them too close to my lines because I still have to solder those. Now we know that the way the angles were made on these, but I have this here just to make sure I don't screw that up. So if I were to use a chisel to mark this line, I'm going to go, it's the same idea as we had here before, where I'm making a diagonal across where the, the scribe lines intersect the cut lines. So we're going to have one here. It's going to be very difficult for you to see some of those additional lines, but the scribe lines are there on diagonals, like there's a diagonal right in front of the chisel there. I don't want to mark it with a pencil because I'm going to need to get pretty close to those lines, so I'll leave it like that. Now, of course, you're seeing all this. Of course, the pen was marked where I'm going to be cutting that and removing it. Those are sockets. Uh, there are a lot of these additional scribe lines. You don't have to worry about these scribe lines because this is going to be joined right there. Those scribe lines are going to be permanently hidden inside the joint. So, you know, mark it deep if you need to. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and cut it. Now, the way that I'm going to have to cut this is I really ideally would like to have the scribe lines lightly on the back so I know a depth uh, from front to back. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But these are going to be a little bit lighter. Let's see if we can get it just so it's... Uh, I don't want to scribe everywhere. We'll just get scribe close to where I'm going to need it. Now that's going to be used when I'm sawing down as a good guide for a stop. Now this one I have to be more careful of. I don't want to have, uh, there's so many more cuts, you don't want to get too many of them off and then have to pair for the rest of your life. Now just like on the pin one, the pin's first video, I'm going to be leaving the line. This one here cuts all the way down, and then only these four in the middle. Let me put a pencil mark there for you to know. There's a, uh, there's a pin socket centered on these, and those only go down to one of these two scribe lines. It'll become clearer when I pull this out. I'm going to skip these center ones and just do the other 
full length cuts. That's all my full length cuts. These ones here, I've got a little scribe line visible on my side as far as the diagonal goes. Now these, gotta be careful. see where the cuts go all the way down to those lines. Now we're going to fret saw, get them close, because then we're going to do it with the chisels. There we go. They're rough, but they're there. So now we're gonna clean them out. Honestly, I'm so glad I bought a 16th inch chisel one day. So there you go, some houndstooth dovetails. They haven't been, they haven't been glued in. I haven't, uh, it was a little bit on the tight side going in. I was going very slow because these are kind of delicate, right? So what was good to do was as I was going through when I noted that there was a little bit of resistance on this side here, it turns out that I just took a look inside and you could see a little curl of the maple had come up uh, in there. So then you can just push it against there and keep on going. So I was just taking my time hammering it in. I don't want to hammer it all the way home. I already know there's a, I can see a little bit of a bump on the inside here. So I need to clean the shoulder on this one. But otherwise it should come out pretty good on the, on the glue up. So I really like the look of that. That's what it's going to look like when you pull out the drawer. You're going to see that on the side. So it makes for something nice and decorative. I'm not gonna say it's the fastest joint, but you can see the layout that I gave you for doing it, the procedure I gave you for doing that really makes it kind of easy. And at the end, it's just a bunch of chiseling. And to be perfectly honest, I was using this uh, 16th inch chisel that I have. Uh, the body itself is fairly high. I mean, that's the cutting edge. <laughs> so between this and the eighth inch, I could get in there, but it's still a little bit tricky. You really need some small dovetail chisels. My dovetail chisels, the ones that have the really narrow sides, are, on, are a quarter inch, so they're far too big for this. I have some eighth inch chisels coming in that would actually help with this process, but just take your time. And a lot of times if you're looking at a corner and you need to clean that corner, well, you can't get your chisel in there because it's a little bit far. Sometimes what you can do is just do some judicious cuts with your saw by hand, just lightly over it until you can get away some of the waste so it's pretty clean. And then as these things push in, they're gonna kinda clear, clear the way a little bit too. Uh, fortunately, the mahogany is compressible, so it's gonna compress in here pretty, ni pretty nicely, whereas the maple, of course, it's not gonna budge. So one thing I did is I gave some relief on the outside edges here, because I did not want this mahogany getting blown out. So I did actually lighten this cut here on the outside to make sure that as I was hammering that in, it was not gonna wanna blow out. So I'm very happy with these. Now I'm gonna do this other side and you can go, I don't know, have a beer. Mm -hmm. 